Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there was what was known as a Warsaw ghetto, uh, was a section of Warsaw, Poland. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where Nazi Germany held Jewish people during World War II. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm thinking that somebody other than the FEMA camps. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, could you get me the FEMA camps again to all of those wired camps that... Um, I know they're real. I mean, just call Homeland Security and the Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency. Yes. And then uh, get, well, I know they're real. Okay. They're, I've seen pictures of them. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of thinking that somebody is wanting to cause a war. Yes. There's a refusal to enforce the actual laws. You're right. There's a very good probability of the uh, breeding of people. Poof. There's a top secret communication of those in the brass. And then there are the federal and state employees that feel no compulsion to enforce the actual laws that have already been passed. As in, well, we're not getting sued and we're not going to prison. Poof. Now, when I add it all up, yes, there's a good probability, yes, mm -hmm. that you could force 350,000 Jews lived in Warsaw, yeah, and they were all forced to live in an area covering 1.3 miles, yes, yes, that's a lot of people in a very small area. <laughs> now, how big of an area would you have to have to make uh, 10 million people live in that area? <laughs> now, if I looked at the multiplication here, right, 350 times 4, yes. And then I did that uh, times eight. Yes, that would be uh, 32 square miles. Poop. Now, if it was underneath a national park, yes, and you only knew about it because you're uh, you're a park ranger. Yeah, yeah. Somebody could be preparing all kinds of locations where we, as the citizens, are going to have to move there because of some sort of catastrophe. <laughs> now, I do know about the deep underground military bunkers and. I appreciate, well, I appreciate why the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines would need that. <laughs> There's no way that I would understand why the National Guard or uh, Homeland Security or uh, the Coast Guard would need it. <laughs> See, these are government agencies. When you're a department of the federal government, Homeland Security, yes, you actually have no war footing. There's no reason for you to want to dig out 30 square miles underneath the national park so that you could obligate the whole population to move there. <laughs> it looks like you're, you're making ghettos <laughs> underneath national parks <laughs> and you had to involve the department of interior. <laughs> well, I know park service. Yes. Is there some place that you wanted me to know about that you do know about that if I went into that secret cave, I'd find myself in 30 fucking square miles right now. Now, for every federal employee that doesn't uh, have the ability to differentiate between military and government employee, okay, <laughs> federal employees can be held personally liable for the refusal to enforce federal laws. Yes. For every general and admiral, yes, and all the soldiers and sailors of the United States military, mm. there's limited amounts of liability that a soldier or a sailor could actually be involved in. Yes. But if you're the general, yes, of the Army, Navy, uh, Air Force, or Marines, yes, and you do know about these crimes, yes, you can be held personally liable. <laughs> and then for every DOD school yes, <laughs> that does know about my sons playing in the wrong grades, yes, they can be held liable. <laughs> and then for all the senior executive service of the federal government that are employees, they are not military person. See, there's a difference between the government and the military. Do you not fucking understand what I'm <laughs>